Benzene is the prototypical aromatic compound, and it's a cyclic array of six carbons with alternating single and double bonds. So it's conjugated, and it's cyclic, and this gives us the idea that maybe all molecules that are conjugated and cyclic like this, that have alternating single and double bonds, are aromatic and should all enjoy, for example, the stability of benzene. This isn't the case. There's more to aromaticity than just alternating single and double bonds. Evidence of this is provided by the molecule cyclobutadiene, which contains two double bonds in a four-membered ring like this, alternating single and double bonds. And yes, this molecule has quite a bit of ring strain because it's a four-membered ring, but maybe we could make up for that due to the fact that this has conjugation and potentially aromaticity, this aromatic stabilization. However, cyclobutadiene has never been isolated. It's been observed. We've been able to make it and observe that we've made it, but only under extreme conditions where the cyclobutadiene is, is trapped and really is unable to react with anything else. For example, at very, very low temperatures or isolated inside a larger molecular structure that it's not going to react with. This is a highly, highly reactive molecule. It's absolutely not aromatic, quite the contrary, as we'll see. Another example of a molecule that we might expect to behave as an aromatic molecule or compound is cyclooctatetraene. This is an eight-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds. But cyclooctatetraene readily reacts with bromine in an addition reaction. We see the results of that here with cyclooctatetraene reacting with Br2 to form this anti 1,2-dibromide and the enantiomer. So what's going on here? Right? What does make a compound aromatic if it's not just being cyclic and being fully conjugated? That's what we're going to dig into in this video. Now, let's start with cyclooctatetraene. When we look at the structure of this molecule, it becomes apparent why it behaves like a plain vanilla alkene. The molecule is actually non-planar. Here's a crystal structure showing the three-dimensional structure of cyclooctatetraene. Notice that the double bonds are not all coplanar. The uh, p orbitals are not all overlapping in a side-on fashion. The C3C4 pi bond, for example, is kind of out up here. The C4C3 pi bond is actually back behind the plane of the screen. So those are almost at right angles to each other. The molecule puckers to avoid conjugation. We'll understand the reasons for this by the end of this video. So because this molecule is non-planar, it's actually not fully conjugated. Each of those alkenes can be thought of as a kind of isolated double bond. We saw this in conformations of conjugated dienes, for example, where rotation of the single bond connecting the double bonds destroyed conjugation. That's going on in this molecule as well. What then does make a given structure aromatic? Well, it is necessary for the structure to be cyclic and for it to be planar. It's also necessary that each atom is sp2 or sp hybridized. This leads to what we call full conjugation, complete conjugation, contiguous overlap of p orbitals around the ring. These are three important conditions, but they're not the only three conditions, and cyclobutadiene tells us this. Cyclobutadiene is absolutely planar, it is cyclic, it is fully conjugated, but it is not aromatic. It's very, very unstable rather than stable. So there's one more condition for aromaticity that we need to dig into, and we'll do that now on the next slide. So here they are, the four conditions for a molecule to be aromatic. It must be cyclic, it must be fully conjugated, it must be planar, we just touched on those three. It also must obey what's called Huckel's rule. Huckel's rule has to do with the number of pi electrons within the ring, the number of electrons in the pi system. That number of electrons must be, here in quotes, 2 plus a multiple of 4. It must be a number that fits this criterion. And mathematically, we could represent this as 4n plus 2. Now, a word about 4n plus 2 briefly here. This n value has no physical significance. It's just a counting number to help us recognize these allowed numbers, or aromatic, if you will, numbers of pi electrons within a cyclic, fully conjugated uh, system. So 2, 6, 10, 14. These are all 4n plus 2 numbers, where n is an integer. 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So n has no physical significance is the upshot of this. It's just used for the math. It's just used so that we recognize the Huckel numbers of electrons, if you will, the Huckel numbers of pi electrons. 
What about molecules like cyclobutadiene that don't have 4n plus 2 pi electrons, but 4n? Well, these are observed to be especially unstable. Cyclobutadiene is the prototypical compound like this, but cyclooctatetraene, when forced into a planar conformation, displays the same kind of, of situation. It's a very unstable structure and will immediately pucker to avoid that conjugation. Molecules with 4n pi electrons that are especially unstable are called anti-aromatic, and we'll see the origins of anti-aromaticity when we dig into molecular orbitals here shortly. In the remainder of this video, I want to look at six examples of molecular structures, and for each we're going to assume that they are planar and evaluate whether they're aromatic or anti-aromatic. They're also all fully conjugated, and we'll verify this as we work through the examples. So the first is benzene, and of course, benzene is aromatic. But now we can roll through the criteria and verify this. It is cyclic. It is planar. It is fully conjugated because each atom is sp2 hybridized. And it has how many pi electrons? Well, 2, 4, 6. For a total of 6, that's a 4n plus 2 number, n equal to 1. And so this is an aromatic compound. It obeys Huckel's rule. The second molecule here is the cycloheptatrienyl anion. It is cyclic, obviously. It is fully conjugated. Keep in mind that there's an additional implicit hydrogen at this anionic carbon, and so that carbon has sp2 hybridization. That sp2 hybridization ensures that this lone pair can engage in conjugation, which it absolutely wants to do, delocalize itself and be counted as part of the pi system in this molecule. So that lone pair is in the pi system, and so we have two, four, six, eight electrons in this molecule. Is that a Huckel number? Is that a 4n plus 2 number? Well, no, it's a 4n number with n equal to 2, right? This molecule is not aromatic, but is anti-aromatic and especially unstable, purely as a result of its pi electron count, right? The fact that it has 8 pi electrons, and that's a 4n number. What about the cycloheptatrienyl cation? Now, well, similar situation. It's a cyclic molecule. It is fully conjugated because this carbon, remember, has an additional implied hydrogen, and so it has sp2 hybridization with the unhybridized p orbital empty now because of the, the positive charge here is an indication of that. This carbon has six electrons total, three electrons formally, right? And that's where the positive charge comes from. So no remaining electrons outside of the hybrids. And so that p orbital is empty. So it is fully conjugated. How many pi electrons does it have? Well, two each from the pi bonds and none at the cationic carbon. We just said the p orbital is empty, right? So this has six pi electrons. Is that a Huckel number? Yes, 4n plus 2, where n is equal to 1, right? This is an aromatic cation. So this is an interesting contrast, right, between these two molecules. The cation is aromatic, but if we reduce that cation by adding two more electrons, we're in an anti-aromatic situation. All right, next up we have the cyclopentadienyl cation here. It's cyclic, it's fully conjugated. Again, remember this carbon right here has sp2 hybridization. And it has how many pi electrons? Two each from the pi bonds for a total of four, and none contributed at the cationic carbon. So we've got four pi electrons total in this molecule. Is four a Huckel number? Well, no. It's 4n, where n is equal to one, right? And that's the anti-aromatic. That's an anti-aromatic situation. This molecule is anti-aromatic, due again purely to its pi electron count. Next up here, we have the cyclopropenyl cation. This is a cyclic molecule. It is fully conjugated. One more time, remember that cationic carbon has an implied hydrogen, three electron groups, sp2 hybridization. And so all three atoms have sp2 hybridization. And how many pi electrons do we have? Well, we've got two from the double bond and none from the cationic carbon. This means we have two pi electrons total. Is that a 4n plus 2 number? Well, yes, when the value of n is equal to 0. This molecule is aromatic. It's got two pi electrons. That's a Huckel number, cyclic, planar, fully conjugated. Lastly, I wanted to look at an aromatic heterocycle 
which is uh, for a heterocycle. <laughs> Let's not spoil it by saying whether it's aromatic or anti-aromatic just yet, but a heterocycle where we have a, a heteroatom in the mix. And we really engage with these as we have in conjugated systems previously. So this oxygen has two lone pairs and it's an O2 oxygen. One of those lone pairs can occupy a P orbital and engage in conjugation. So this oxygen can be sp2 and is sp2 hybridized so that one of its lone pairs is part of this pi system one and only one so the pi electron count here is two four six and that is absolutely a huckle number aside from that the molecule is very clearly cyclic it is planar and it's fully conjugated each of these atoms has sp2 hybridization this molecule is aromatic and it's an important aromatic heterocycle known as furan. So overall here, we've seen the four criteria for aromaticity. And in particular, we've learned how to use Huckel's rule to distinguish between aromatic and anti-aromatic structures when the other three conditions hold. Quite frequently, anti-aromatic molecules will pucker to try to avoid conjugation, actually avoid this situation where they're anti-aromatic because they'd rather be non-aromatic. They're actually more stable in a non-aromatic conformation with the p orbitals out of alignment than in an anti-aromatic planar conformation.